Hi, I'm Sandra O'Brien and I'm a technical officer in the psychology department in the University of Limerick. I have my notes here beside me to make sure that I don't forget to say anything. Uh, so what my job means is that I look after the equipment, so things like the computers, um, whatever people might need to actually carry out their studies. Um, I help people set up research projects um, and to carry those out and also uh, help uh, our faculty, so the, the people who give the lectures with all of their teaching. I also teach research methods, uh, which is teaching psychology students all about the research process. So how they get from having an idea to telling people about the work. So designing it, collecting the data, analysing it, usually using statistics to figure out like what does it all mean, um, and telling people about what they've actually found from their research. The best thing about this job is that every day is different. So today I'm going to be getting our computer labs ready for the students to all co uh, come back. Then I have a meeting about how we're going to organise running all of our lectures kind of with COVID, whether things are going to be in person, online, that kind of thing, how it's all going to work. Then I have a meeting with a student about a new study that she wants to run online, um, what kind of equipment she needs, what kind of tests she needs, how to make all of that work. Sometimes the job can get really, really busy, um, but there's also downtime as well. So I do find that I have to be really, really organised uh, to make sure that I know what's happening in every day and that I get all of my tasks done. So how I got here is that I did a BA in psychology in NUI Galway because I was really interested in like the mind and behaviour, how our mind works. I kind of found out towards the end of that that I didn't really want to be a psychologist. Uh, I was very interested in like, the biological basis of behaviour, so how what's going on in our brain can, can impact our behaviour. So then I did an MSc in neuropharmacology, which is how uh, drugs and other chemicals impact the brain and behaviour. I did, got to do work experience in the University of Mississippi as part of this as well. Then I took some time out and I worked in a music shop, which for a 22 year old was the best job ever. This for me now is the best job ever, but I really enjoyed that. Uh, I went back to the department where I did my MSc to do um, some work experience because I wanted to work in industry. I wanted to work for a drug company. Um, but then I realized that I actually really liked the research side of things. So I stayed on to do a PhD which was looking at the effects of antidepressants in pregnancy. And I also taught research methods, so teaching about the research process while I was doing that. I was always really interested in the technical side of things. So towards the end of my PhD, I applied for the job I'm in now, um, and I've been here for nearly nine years. Um, I took a few side roads to get to where I was um, with working in a music shop. I worked in a kebab shop for a little while. Um, and I do think that it kind of made me a better scientist because I'm able to look at things from a lot of different perspectives. I'm the first person in my family to go to college. Um, I nearly turned around and left on my first day of orientation because I actually couldn't figure out what line I was supposed to join uh, to get my ID card. And I really felt that if I couldn't figure out that first part, then maybe I wasn't supposed to be there. Now, I was really, really shy. And it took a lot of nerve to just turn around and ask somebody what line I was supposed to go to. Thankfully, I did. Turned out it didn't really matter which line I went into. It did take a long time before I felt like I belonged in college. So my advice to anybody who might be feeling the same way is to find a person who knows about this stuff. It could be a teacher, it could be your guidance counsellor, it could be like your friend's mam or a neighbour. Ask them absolutely everything. There is no such thing as a stupid question in this kind of um, environment. And generally what I've found, because I'm the person now that people will come to, is that people are happy to help and to tell you about their experiences.